Hey guys, well it's been a while since I posted a video. I've been having a lot of fun with my motor electric motorcycle over there. Um, I just went on a ride recently that was about 65 miles and it's a mountain road, twisty road, probably averaging something like 40 miles an hour uh, for most of the ride and uh, came back and that was pretty much as much as the batteries had left. They might have had <clears throat> maybe another five miles left in them. And on that ride, I probably had an elevation gain of about 2,500 feet. So I'm pretty happy with the performance of this bike. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. But I have another idea for a slightly lighter weight motorcycle that I'm working on. And so I thought I'd show you the parts that I've been accruing for that. So here's the next pile of parts. Uh, I've got a, you can see the frame there. I've got some upside down forks. I've got a, a couple wheels there. There's a controller, battery. Uh, so let me, let me get a little closer look and show you what I got. This is the frame that I'm going to be using and I'm actually going to be flipping it upside down and hacking off probably this triangle right here and that's probably most of it. So basically it's going to be the head tube and then this part right here. It's going to be upside down so I'll be sitting right about there. There's a fork set that I'm going to be using and of course uh, you know they'll be rotating through there and I think I've figured out how to mount them in this uh, frame. Now why am I using this frame? Well because I can register it. This is actually a uh, Kawasaki, like a 2001 Kawasaki Ninja 250cc. So it's actually a frame that's, uh, you know, registered for highway use if I want to. But I'm trying to make this uh, actually a pretty lightweight setup. Um, so here's what I got going. <clears throat> uh, I've got a front wheel that's a 14 inch front and a 17 inch rear and they're pretty narrow tires. Okay, I want this thing to be kind of like a sort of, sort of like a two-wheel go-kart, if you will, so lightweight. It's going to be really low to the ground. Um, this motorcycle here, I I'm already sitting pretty low, you know, as motorcycles go. It's, you know, it's kind of more like a cruiser uh, stance. And this one's going to be even lower than that. Uh, this one's going to be more like, more like a recumbent motorcycle. That's kind of what I'm going for. Um, now, you see over here, this is my rear wheel, and it actually has the motor in it. And uh, the reason for that is because if you look at this motorcycle here, okay, it's pretty standard, pretty typical, right? Especially for electric motorcycles, you've got your motor right down there. Well, right there is where I want to sit. Instead of being up there, I want to be even lower. One of the main reasons is for uh, wind resistance or reducing wind drag. So this bike does pretty good, but if I can get myself down even lower, put a fairing on or something on this one, I'm going to have even less wind resistance. So if I can't have the motor there, then it's going to have to be inside the wheel and enter this wheel here. So this motor, a little, little background here, this is a QS uh, made by the company QS Motor, I think, um, in China. Let's see, I think it's on the other side. Yeah, QS Motor. So I did a bunch of research trying to figure out, you know, what uh, winding that I needed. So I've, I've got this set up so I can go the speed that I want to, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And it should have some pretty good torque. I think it's rated for three or 4,000, 3,000 watts continuous maybe. Um, and then, you know, peak is quite a bit higher. But um, anyway, it's uh, it's quite a bit of motor um, for what I have here, but that's what I want. I'm trying to overbuild this a little bit so I can have good acceleration, um, but still be pretty lightweight. Uh, now, the interesting thing is, I don't know if you can see it in the video, uh, right about here, there's actually two spots. This was damaged in shipping. So I would love to say good stuff about QS Motor, and, you know, if your stuff doesn't get damaged, I think it's fine. Um, for what I can tell, the overall build quality looks pretty good of this motor so far. Um, and in general, working with them isn't too bad. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a language uh, barrier, just kind of, you know, back and forth through emails. But it's not, not too bad, and the shipping time's okay. But when this came damaged, uh, it was sent by FedEx, and FedEx would not let me do a claim, so I had to go through... QS motor and they said that they used a secondary shipper and it was all hard always hard to do claims with them So I'm pretty disappointed because the, the wheel is damaged beyond use So maybe I'll put a little clip of how bent the wheel is It was very obvious that it was damaged I sent videos and pictures to FedEx or excuse me to QS so that they could send it to FedEx, but uh, they ended up sending me a new rim and a couple new spokes, but it's going to be on me to take it to a motorcycle shop and, and relace it. Um, so that's kind of irritating, but I got the parts, so we're going to see how that goes. <clears throat> I also have, uh, through QS Motor, I bought this controller. I think it's made by some other company. Uh, let's see what it says on here. Uh, yeah, there, there's the website right there. Yuan King. Yuan King. 
Uh, this, so this is a 150 amps up to 120 volt controller. So this should be uh, put out a nice amount of amps to spin up that motor pretty quick. Um, I'm going to be using EIG cells. Uh, I believe these were at some point in zero motorcycles. I think it was like the second uh, battery format that they used after the, the first cells that they had that didn't, the cylindrical cells didn't work too well. So this is, this is some batteries. I have enough pack. It probably comes out to about here. Uh, it's up on my workbench up there. And uh, so anyway, I've got enough of these to do, uh, it's going to be about 100 volts. And so at 100 volts with this motor and this controller, uh, I should have pretty good acceleration. And I've calculated that get up to about 60 miles an hour. So a pretty fun speed. And again, this is going to uh, have a license plate on it so I can run it on the, the street or the, the freeway if I want to. Um, these are some shocks that I got. These are actually from Banggood. Um, pretty good price. They were only like $85. Uh, they sent them to me, so I'm kind of sort of doing a review on them. The build quality looks pretty good. Um, there's the nit They're nitrogen charged, and they have some adjustment on them down here. Um, so this says, uh, for this is your rebound adjustment. This is fast and slow. And of course, you've got your, your overall um, spring tension there. And this is the one, this is something I'm a little bummed about because uh, it seems to say for, you know, hard and soft setting on the shocks, but it just sits and it just spins forever. And I put, I took one of these shocks and I spun it all the way on the hard setting. And I took the other shock and I spun it all the way towards the soft setting just for, you know, 30 spin, 30 turns or so. And I pushed on both of them and I can't really tell much difference. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Um, at least they have uh, rebound speed. So that'll be something that I can adjust. So um, I guess the one part that you can't see out here in my pile of parts is my rear swing arm. So I happen to have another uh, zero uh, swing arm. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, those are nice and lightweight. So, you know, it all should be, this is a steel frame. Um, so it's not super light, but once I cut off the stuff I don't need, it's going to save a little bit of weight. And he, here are these upside down forks I got from... Uh, it was, it was called uh, partsforscooters.com. It's uh, in Alameda, California. I think these were kind of like the last pair that they had. They look nice. Um, they're kind of like for like the dirt bikes like this, you know, the uh, 110cc, I, th I think is what they're for. But they actually weigh a bit. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. But um, <clears throat> I think it's going to provide a nice smooth ride. Okay, so use my whiteboard here. This is kind of what I'm going for with this new motorcycle. So again, if you notice the really reclined position, uh, so it's gonna be a recumbent motorcycle. And so here's my frame, kind of comes like this, kind of comes up here, I'm gonna have to build this part out. There's my uh, swing arm right there, there's the rear shock, and there's me sitting there, there's the handlebars. And you can see my feet actually come next to the uh, front wheel. Okay, but it's a smaller wheel, and so when I turn side to side, without having my feet too wide, I'll actually be able to have a pretty good turning radius um, on this motorcycle. Okay, so another thing that I didn't tell you when I was in the shop is that I want this to be a hybrid. That's that's one of the hopes, is that I can put a, a gas engine. So besides not having the motor right about here, okay, and it's in the center, that also frees up this area, at least if I do uh, dual shocks on the side of the swing arm. And so then I can put a gasoline engine here, okay? And it's going to be pretty small. This is not going to be something that's, you know, blasts you off the, the starting line, if you will, or from the stoplight. But it's going to be something that I hope could actually maintain... The speed, you know, 50 would be great. Uh, you know, even better if it maintains the speed up to 60. But if I'm going to have this thing nice and, you know, fairinged in and the wind drag's pretty low, it shouldn't take a lot of uh, power to keep keep me up to speed. And with electric vehicles, when your battery goes out, what do you do? You got to charge. So I really want to have the ability to keep going even if my batteries die. So, uh, and then lastly, which would be super cool, is if I could figure out a way to have pedal power also drive that rear wheel. Um, so I don't know if you saw it, but on this rear wheel, of course, there's a motor inside the hub, but it also has a sprocket because this motor is designed to be used on like a really heavy duty bicycle. Um, so of course this motor could be linked up to one of those sprockets and there's a, there's actually a couple different, um, you know, sizes of sprocket on there. Maybe there'd be some way that I could link it up to pedal power up front. So then I could have pedal, gasoline, or electric power. So this thing would be really a unique vehicle. So that's what I got going on. That's my next little project here.